All right, so it's a little bit embarrassing to admit, but actually, as I filmed this video, I thought that this was a passazana because that's what I bought this plant as. And a little bit of a spoiler, these are actually the cuttings. But anyways, I, as I was doing the video, I realized that this is actually a McDowell. And McDowells are actually a hybrid between Pastazanum and Gloriosum. And we have a Gloriosum way over there. So the way that you can tell them apart is that the Pastazanum, first of all, it's got a round petiole around here, whereas the Gloriosum would be angular. But then this, see the little frill around the back? That little bit of red, it's a sign that it's uh, part glorious and it's not a full bread or a pure bread passazanum. And then if you look closely at the new leaves, the edges around the leaves would have a little bit of pink around them. But the most telling factor is this uh, caterpillar, the new growth here. It's a red in color and this is something that only Gloriosums have. The passazanum has completely green or rather light green caterpillars here. So yeah, anytime I mention passazanum in this video, I'm actually mentioning, I meant to say the philodendron mcdowell so all right enjoy that video hi guys my name is sean i'm a houseplant enthusiast from jakarta indonesia welcome to today's video where i'm going to be sharing with you the care and also the propagation of the philodendron pastazanum this is a really beautiful plant from south america and this is oftentimes confused with the philodendron gloriosum and i have a video on the gloriosum it's actually one of my first videos i'm going to link that up above so the philodendron gloriosum pastazanum McDowell and the Plumenii, which is right there, they all have very, very similar type of care in terms of sunlight, bright indirect light, a little bit of morning direct sunlight is very good for them or it's dappled direct sunlight because when you have good light, uh, they will give you bigger leaves, they'll grow faster and they will have shorter internodes and shorter petioles because sometimes they can get really leggy and big with tiny leaves. That's a good sign that you're not giving it enough light. In terms of watering, they have to dry completely between watering. They really do not want to be overwatered. So I give them my aerite potting mix here. And since this one's in the terracotta pot, I do water this every day, but it lives outdoors in great light and it dries out literally completely every day by the next morning. So they're terrestrial philodendrons in that they grow terrestrially. So they grow kind of across the forest floor and they're not epiphytic like most of your philodendrons. Keep that in mind when you're potting them up that they grow sideways and not upwards. Uh, in fact, I have one glorious one back there on the shelf where it's kind of going down the pot and then now it's going under the shelf. I don't know if you can imagine that, but that is a terrible thing it's going through. So it's doing a backflip kind of, I'm looking at it right now, but I hope it does make it. I think I should propagate that plant soon, I guess. <laughs> but anyways, I uh, digress. Fertilize this, I would say, a little bit more than your other philodendrons. Again, usually for terrestrial plants, uh, they are living on forest floor, which is a little bit more dense in nutrients than your epiphytic plants. And in terms of pests, uh, these guys actually have a little bit of uh, extra floral nectaries, as you can see here. And that is caused by uh, the plant's defense system. It's producing the sugars to attract ants. I know that I mentioned this many times in my philodendron videos, but this one is particularly prone to the extra floral nectaries, which means that the ants are protecting the plant from pests, which suggests that the pest does exist in, the, in this plant. So this plant is pretty pest prone. If you keep this indoors in lower humidity, it, you may get spider mites. And I actually have this plant, and I don't know if you can see here, it's chewed up by caterpillars. And one of the leaves was completely chewed up by caterpillars. It's gone, I have to cut it off. So I'm gonna insert a picture of what that looks like. It's pretty nasty. The caterpillar was even doing a backflip in one of those photos, but it's okay. I mean, we live harmoniously with nature. They deserve the right to eat. And I know that, uh, as I showed you in this video, that I'm going to be propagating that node. Even though that node has no leaf, we can actually produce a plant out of it. So do not despair if you lose a leaf. That node is gonna give you a whole new plant, which is gonna give you a whole generation of plants later on. And one last thing is that some people do plant these in the soil where the main stem is inside the soil, whereas I plant them kind of above the soil and they just creep along the top of the soil. I don't think there's a right or wrong to that. I do this for the reason that I am an overwaterer and if I just keep this under the potting mix, I may rot the main stem with overwatering. So this is my, my biggest fear. Anyways, this plant kind of adapts by just creeping along the top and it doesn't really want to dive into the soil. So some professional growers actually grow them in the soil and I believe that's probably one of the reasons why they can get bigger leaves. And it, that's because if you look closely here, the aerial roots kind of grow all around the stem 
So some of the area roots here are actually uh, shooting outwards and then I know that I can tuck them back into the pot but when aerial roots are actually rooted well in the soil it will give you bigger better leaves and faster growth because there are more roots to support that plant so there's two to do it I may try both just to see what happens uh, but again keep in mind that if you're gonna plant your Passizanum gloriosum plumenii deep in the potting mix don't overwater it <laughs> that's my only advice so without further ado let's get started before i cut up the plant it is worth mentioning that this is actually where the main plant is they don't really need a big pot they don't have crazy huge root system and this is what i meant when i say that some of the aerial roots are not underground they're kind of shooting outwards and this is kind of a waste if you plant this a little bit deeper this will form roots for the plant so let me actually do that let me try that out just to see what happens because this is pretty slow growing for me for some reason so maybe I'm doing it wrong, but this is the safest way to do it because you're not really going to overwater it when you have the main stem outside and as you can see just creeping on. But here's the main uh, thing about my propagation today. I'm actually going to be doing uh, what you call an air layered propagation where this was actually vining over and immediately when it was around this point, I added another pot with aeroid potting mix right next to it. So this next uh, nose basically have rooted into this pot so what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this here and we may let's see how i'm gonna unpot this i'm gonna see how greedy i am but i'm gonna try to make many plants out of this where possible because this is actually not a cheap plant to come by so we're gonna experiment with different methods to propagate it if you want to see the most basic way of propagating it the philodendron glorious in video which i have uh, done before that's going to show you how it's uh, gonna be done in a more conservative way so let's get started. Oh, and here's a plumenii. And this is also uh, getting ready to be air layered. As you can see, some of the roots here has already reached out into this pot. I'm gonna see if I can tuck some of these roots. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna tuck that in here. So the roots are gonna find its way into this pot. And then this next node will root it. I should have gotten the bigger pot actually. Maybe I'm gonna do that after this video because this pot is too small. So I'm going to put it here and then when it just keeps creeping along that next pot and I'm going to chop it and basically both the cutting and the mother plant would have a lot of roots so they will put out new growth faster there's going to be a very high chance of success for the plant so I do recommend to air layer your creeping philodendrons. Oh, and one last important thing to have to know is that this is the anatomy of the cutting I'm going to show you later. Of course, I'm going to show you up close and personal later during the cutting. But here are the growing eye. So this is the node. This is the, the leaf of the node growing up. Uh, this is where the node is. This is the growing eye. And that's the aerial root below that, this one. So each cutting will have all these uh, parts. What you want to do is you do not want to cut this growing eye. If you cut along this, you're done. That cut to produce a baby so you're gonna have to cut above that all right so the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this uh, severe these two plants so that I can work with them better I need to find out where the growing I, I see one here this is the growing eye for this node and then for this one I suspect uh, it's down here I think I see a little bump is that it I don't know but I think it's safe to cut right here in the middle between them That's done. Okay. Is that gonna fall over? I guess it is. Yeah, I'm gonna leave that alone. So for this one, uh, oh, it smells so nice in here, you guys. I love that smell. Uh, it's like black pepper, like a sweet black pepper. And this is also where the new leaf can come from uh, if you have the apical bud, I guess. So this is really cool that they have this. So with this one, let me cut this off right in the middle of the node. All right. I may want to unpot this because I want to get aggressive with the cuts today. So let me unpot this whole thing because I some of the roots may be tangled up in there between the nodes. I'll wiggle it. I should wet this actually. It's much easier to work with a wet plant. Oh, and this is pretty root bound. I'm going to be giving this a pretty uh, big, uh, much bigger pot after this. Oh, it's not focusing. Hang on, let me try it. There, I hope it's focusing better. So that's where we made the cut. And I'm going to show you the cuttings up close later. But first, let me untangle this and try to get as many healthy roots as possible. I really recommend the aeroid potting mix because 
they just love it when it's so chunky and dries fast. Even though it is a terrestrial philodendron, it does appreciate something to grip onto. As you can see here, it's really gripped on into the media really well. Beautiful, strong roots. And I see some white fuzz, which is mealy bugs, which is fine. That happens quite a bit. I don't remember how, uh, when the last time I, I treated this with pest. Uh, there's so many plants, but usually once every uh, three to four months, I would go around and treat them with pesticides and I sometimes miss a few plants or sometimes I don't treat them deep enough where the pest can persist pretty deep in the plant. It's not a big problem. Mealybugs do stunt the growth of the plant and makes it grow a little bit slower than normal, but it doesn't really kill them or at least not very quickly in a way. So this is the one cutting. And let me see that. That's the growing eye back here. Let me clear some of this here. Beautiful. So I'm going to plant this up. Uh, let me see. What do I want to do? I may do this in moss actually because it's got a small root system. It doesn't really have a lot. Even though this is actually ready for arid potting mix. I don't know. Should I do That's the leaf by the way. It's been chewed up. I don't know. Should I? Let me see. Yeah, so I'm going to go with the uh, moss because this is a pretty expensive plant and don't want to lose it. Moss is a safer option usually. And this is here is a uh, thing of, uh, what do you call this, activated charcoal. And what it does is that it helps prevent fungus. So I'm just going to rub it onto the wound where I make the cut. This is to kind of seal the, the, the wound a bit, prevent a bit of infection. I'm going to put that in uh, this container here, the see-through container that I really love propagating plants in because uh, what do you call it, they, you can see the roots form in it. Yeah, I'm going to put it sideways with the leaf facing up. Careful not breaking the roots. The roots are a little bit stiff. And then when I put the moss in there, I'm just going to be very gentle. I don't want to compact the moss. If you've seen my other videos, you'll know why. I never compact anything. I need to keep it a little bit airy inside. Uh, let some air in. It just needs to find some humidity. That's what they need to do. It doesn't need to be wet inside. This is not water propagation. So if you, you keep it too wet, you will rot the plant. I think I got it. Yeah, you can do the same if you don't have the, the leaf entirely. You can just put it on moss. Although I find that it takes a really long time and uh, the new leaf is going to be super tiny. That's what happens usually. So moving on down, I will cut this, which is what we were talking about before, where it doesn't have a leaf. I guess this is the leaf that was chewed up by the caterpillar, I think. I'm going to cut this off. But thankfully, it's got a lot of root system here. It's got very good roots. So let me try to untangle it carefully. Oh, this is really beautiful. Look at all these root porn that I'm working with. I love it. I don't know, I, maybe I'll just put this straight into arid potting mix actually because it's got so much roots already that I don't think I need, uh, I needed to put it in moss. So I'm gonna put this in a pretty small pot. I, uh, the smaller the pot actually the better because you're not as likely to overwater it. There's not that many water that it can retain in there when you have a small pot but you can see that this probably may have to be repotted after the leaves emerge because look at that it's already taken a bit of the pot so i want to keep the growing eye side up so it can find its way out how cute that's going to be a baby plant someday i'm just going to reuse some of the old soil but keep in mind that i do need to treat this with a little bit of pesticide after this so that um, the mealybugs don't get to the plants let me come around some fresh aeroid potting mix. And you can actually water this a little bit more, I don't want to say that you want to drown this plant, but when the plant has roots, that means that the plant can effectively take in a little bit of that water. So you can water it more, but if the plant does not have any roots, you really, really, really want to back, over, back off with watering. And let's see, do I want to be greedy because I can actually cut this up? Uh, let's see, I don't know if you can see here. There are, oh, this node looks really bad. It looks, 
Uh, that's where the leaf came off actually. This is probably where I cut the leaf off. There is a growing eye under here. I don't know if you can see that. There's a growing eye here. So what I'm, gonna, I'm going to cut it off because I'm going to be trying to produce as many of these as possible. Oh my god, I cut into some of the roots. I'm sorry, I made a, I made a cut right here. Look at that. Wah, 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 wah. That's really bad. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Very well, I think I got most of it. That's beautiful. Look at all these root systems. This is just going to take off so fast because it's got all these roots to take in water and nutrients for this cutting. I still got a half a leaf, so that's going to photosynthesize for them as well. This is going to be doing better than this one, which has no leaf, but a lot of roots. So I'm going to put it in a similar size pot. And actually for this one, should I do it? Maybe this is the one that I'm going to plant a little bit more deep. So yeah, let's see. I'm going to plant it almost halfway into the pot. So I've got that one and I'm going to pot this up. I'm going to put a little bit of the potting mix and then I'm going to plant this up here. Good, so it's only a little bit bigger than the previous pot. I'm just going to sneak some potting mix all around. All around. This is going to take off, I, I believe. So this is the parent plant. And usually I have to watch my rewatch my videos because I don't remember which which is the parent plant. <laughs> I'm propagating so many plants. There's so much going on in my life that the only way that I can recall anything. I'm gonna put a little bit of charcoal here too, actually, just in case. Yeah, but I'm not gonna bury this this deep anyway. So yeah. So doing these videos is one way for me to kind of archive what I did and see where I make mistakes and then broadcast it on in the internet. <laughs> For you guys to see so this is the the tippy top cutting and of course i'm going to be greedy let's let's unpot this let's see how much roots are in here and i know that you guys are probably curious to know how long i've had this earlier and the answer is i don't know two months maybe i think it's about two months that it's been in here so let's see how much roots we've got going on here it looks like it's going to be a lot of roots it feels like it's really not letting go so yeah and I've been, I've been smelling neem oil all day long. I don't know, there's a neem oil leakage somewhere in my plant studio and I just can't feel... Oh my god, look at this. This is so pretty. This is so beautiful. Look at that, you guys. That's the top. This is so nice. So very nice. I'm gonna cut this into two plants. Now that's got its own roots. Okay, so I'm gonna cut it right here. done before I forget because I tend to forget I'm gonna just rub it now with the activated charcoal oh it smells so nice I love that smell there this is done finally free this is the top cutting this is actually going to produce the biggest leaf most likely and the new growth is coming out from here uh, from this uh, point right here so yeah this doesn't have a lot of roots a little bit worried but it's gonna, I think it's gonna do fine and this one I think I'm gonna be burying it a little bit deep too what? yeah I think I'm gonna just use this pot should I or just a smaller pot hang on yeah this pot is a little bit too small for it even though it's in, hang on let me get that pot then. I don't know this is gonna be hard for it to stay yeah I'm so conflicted this is the right size pot but I'm gonna have a hard time getting the leaves to stand really hard time oh sorry and the top cutting you don't want to plant it too deep actually because if you do this next leaf is going to come out like like that it's going to hit the side of the pot and it's going to be stunted it's going to be suffocated so you don't want to plant the the top cutting too deep in the soil okay this is gonna be a challenge for it to stand i may have to give it like a cr crutch to lean on later but i guess this one we can just put it back and it's the original pot yeah it's pretty root bound though hang on let me see do i want to do that or do i want to nope <laughs> too small i'm not really worried about overwatering because look at that there's so much roots here to absorb all that water all that nutrients and water that we're going to give this so let me give you a bird's eye view of everybody and then I will see you guys in a few months. All right, so this is everybody. So we've got the parent plant here. 
one, two, three, four, five. So we've got five nodes or five cuttings. You know what? I'm actually going to be uh, watering these and I'm going to be putting this in my, what do you call that? Propagation box. I do have one where it's completely enclosed and it's going to be about 99% humidity in there. So I'm going to try to do that. I'm going to put that in there to propagate and see what happens. This one, I'm going to leave it outside because the uh, humidity outside is already 80 to 90%. Uh, these guys are not humidity like loving plants. They don't really need that high humidity, but I heard that it does help them along. And this is some slow release fertilizer that I added to the top of the potting mix. This is going to be enough for the next six to nine months. You don't want to add too much. The purple stuff is Furadon. It's a very controversial pesticide. Judge me if you will, but I do use it because I have too many plants. But be mindful when you use this that it's not really that good for the environment. And uh, also the ecosystem where the animals uh, circle of life anyways i digress i'll see you guys in a few months bye welcome to a seven weeks update all of the cuttings have survived i'm very happy to say that uh, let's go one by one so this one the leaf didn't do so well i actually see some webbing here but i don't think it's spider mites let me look closely no, I don't think it's spider mites, but it put out one leaf and then the second one is unfurling. Look at how pretty that is. Beautiful. It's got a little bit of pink here too. And the roots, oh my goodness, look at that. This actually needs to be repotted soon into an aeroid potting mix. And then let me get the next one. Oh, this is pretty heavy actually. It's doing so well. Oh, it's caught. Okay. All right, so I need two hands. This is a pretty big leaf. It's put out another leaf here. It's about the size of my palm. Very beautiful leaf. I really love the, I don't know what you call these, how it's like plumped up. It's a really, really beautiful plant. And it can potentially put out a vine here, as you can see, but then normally they would put out uh, another vine behind the last leaf. So let me take off this cat catafil. Is that what it is? Um, let me take this off. Yeah, I see something here. There's another sharp point here. You're not really supposed to peel it off <laughs> because I think the plant is still taking energy or food from the caterpillar here. But that's where the new growth will come from. So, yeah, this is doing incredibly well. So apparently the Pasozanum is very easy to propagate, very much like the Gloriosum. At least in my experience, this is another one. It's got a beautiful, perfect leaf. Really love that extra floral nectaries there. It's really broke the line, uh, that perfectly straight line there. Really interesting. And it's put out um, quite a few leaves and this new leaf is gonna be quite big, I think. And then let me see, what else do we have here? This one's in terracotta. And it's put out one leaf here. I actually can't remember which one the parent plant is. <laughs> yeah, there we go. And then this last one here. It's put out a, a, a new shoot here. All right, so I actually went to rewatch the previous clips. This apparently is the parent plant and it's put out small leaves because it is recovering, but there should be a lot of roots here. Look at that new growth point here. Everybody is here, everyone's present. And I guess I'm gonna end this video here because as you can see, they're doing really well and they're quite easy to propagate. I will be selling some of these soon, I guess, so I can buy more plants. Uh, these guys are quite expensive here for some reason. Um, the Gloriosum here is very cheap on the other hand. I don't know why that is. Actually, I find that the Pasazanum grows as fast as the Gloriosum. So maybe it is a supply and demand thing, I guess. <laughs> Anyways, I'm at Botanist on Instagram if you wanna DM me on any questions regarding plant care and propagations, I'll try my best to get back to you. Meanwhile, I hope that you guys are staying safe and I will see you in the next video. Bye.